and Allegro again this week. Just be careful, I noted in your notes, um, not to start too quickly with the first two. All right, it's easy to go like that and then go slower than you should do. So all the quavers, right hand, left hand, should be the same speed, okay? So it's no good doing two quick ones and then going slower. I don't know if you could hear that. It, the danger is you change the rhythm if you're not careful and we don't want that to happen because it's hard to correct it then. So really go slowly every time you have those two quaver entry into the melodies, which happen quite a lot in the music actually, if you look. All right, so in bar eight and bar 13, you get it as well. Take them steadily, because at the moment you're not playing all the other quavers that quickly. All right, so just watch out. was much better today so keep it up so this G in my right hand I'm going to lift and then carry on okay so just watch that bar again that's bar six so up then carry on all right the rhythm must keep moving so you do the rest here then carry on all right um, so I wonder if we can carry on the next three bars. I haven't put this in your notes here. To try it hands together. Okay, so that's up to bar eight. Let's see if you can do those bars hands together. I'll do it once again. So I'm just starting from bar six. It'd be good for you to start your practice from bar six. It's a good place to learn to pick the music up from. So up, then keep going. Together, rest in the left hand. Together, rest in the left hand. Now please don't turn your thumb under here. Get rid of that habit. Go to the four straight away, no turn. Okay, then there's a break and we're carrying on. So we're just keeping this hand separately now this okay it just needs to be keep practicing it so that you get better at flowing just watch bar 12 very carefully that you end on a all right the tendency there is to do a skip at the end down to g it's not that it's just in steps next door notes all right finishes on a here okay um, from bar nine, we're going to go hands separately. So we're going to learn the left hand. So the left hand, you have to move here, just up one note. All right, so your fifth finger's on the D. Then there's a rest. Then it's C, rest, B, rest, G. Now here, push the hand forward. Can you see my hand moving forward? Your tendency is to twist your hand because you need the F sharp next. You shouldn't do that. You should push the hand forward so the hand stays straight parallel with the mute with the keys fifth finger then goes to the f sharp fourth finger to the g and then you finish on minim d okay so what i want to see when you approach that f sharp is you move the hand forward like that what i don't want to see is twisting all right, you avoid that at all costs, okay? You push the hand forward so the little finger can reach. That's a far better approach to it, okay? And then just generally, going back a little bit, when I was watching your scales, um, we talked about keeping a ball or something round under your hand. If you can see my hand, you can see through the hand, all right, underneath here. Yours tends to be flat like that, and sometimes your fingers go flat as well. Okay, you should always have a bit of space under your hand, so make sure you're holding things up. Particularly when you have to do a turn, such as a thumb turn in a scale, all right? The hand should be, there should be a, quite a gap here between the keys and your hand to get the thumb under. 
right? If you flatten the hand, you're squashing the thumb and you either end up doing that or it's very clumsy, all right? If really you shouldn't be playing on all of the thumb like that, you should only be playing on the corner of it, okay? If you flatten it, you end up playing like that. If you bend the hand and bend the thumb, this part of your thumb, this little joint here, goes upwards, it goes away from the key, all right? So it means then you're playing on the corner a bit more, all right? So you've always had a tendency to be play very flat fingered and flat hand. You need to try and really work hard at keeping that round shape, keeping everything open underneath the hand. Don't flatten it and close it. Keep it open so all your turns, when you do arpeggios, that's quite a big turn. So you really, can you see how much there's a gap here underneath my hand to allow the thumb to, to travel underneath? If you don't, that's what happens. I've squashed the thumb. I've just not given it the room it needs, okay? So open, push out and open the hand out so the thumb can travel underneath with ease, okay? So you need to think about that for all your playing as well as your scales and arpeggios.